Well, Mark, since April 14th, the day of your introduction, what has it been like for you to be the head coach of Kentucky? Um, it has uh, been awesome. It just is, it's, it's um, you know, you love, first of all, it's, it means so much to me to be here, right? Um, I love the state. This, I love this program. Uh, it is like in my DNA. It changed who I was as a person. And so the chance to come back here and be a part of this again is in every sense a dream come true. And um, a chance to um, try and build on the incredible, uh, like, incredible legacy of Kentucky basketball and add our chapters and to serve the people of this state and to have a chance to um, bring young men in here and help them grow. It's just like it's, it's everything you could hope for. To, to add 12 new players to a roster, to add a staff, how much was that a whirlwind and how stressful was that at times? Um, I think it's really exciting and I think that the, the most, the, the thing I keep um, reminding myself that I kept trying to pull myself is like just go slower because um, you want to you want to turn the page on everything really quick but but every time you add a piece to a staff or to a team it changes the dynamic of what you have a little bit and it changes a little bit of what you're looking for in the next piece and 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 then and then there's this 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 you know this is a very artistic process and so I think it's been more exhilarating than stressful and it's just um, it's a beautiful thing, man. Teams are a living organism. A, a staff is a living organism. It's like a living, breathing entity. And, and, um, and so it's not just like hiring somebody, for example, to do a list of seven different components of a job. It's hiring somebody to like interact and interface with every other person on the staff and every guy, player on the team. And so I think it's, it's beautiful, man. And if you do it right, if you can kind of artistically hit the right spaces and bring the right pieces and direct them in the right direction, then you get a synergy that's super powerful and, 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 and something that can lead to your ultimate goals. And that's what we're trying to do. Now that you've had a chance to, to kind of settle into this thing, how do you want to build rosters here? Yep. Um, I think we'd have a bunch of components. I think that um, I need to have a group of guys here that like f their lifeblood, like from the from inception, from you know, from even being a, the possibility of an idea in their families' minds, have been breathing in Kentucky basketball. I got to have a foundation there. I got to have a foundation of supremely uh, talented young talent, um, uh, the best players in the country. And I got to have a foundation of veteran guys that um, can bring uh, what only veterans can bring. Uh, the only way to, to, to be experienced is to experience. And I got to bring in a mix of those guys. And so those are three tiers of guys that we'll always be chasing here in this program. Now, college athletics nowadays, when it comes to building rosters, is it's completely different than maybe it was 15, 20, you know, some odd years ago, even maybe five or five to ten. It, a lot of it is transactional now. How are you to deal with that component? Uh, I'm not really interested in the transactional part. I just, I, it just doesn't interest me. Um, you know, it's everyone's talking about transformational rather than transactional. Um, but the transformational part is the only meaning that you get from from this whole deal. It, Leanne and I talk about it all the time. You know, these, this job, like every head coaching job, but this job, like it can lose its meaning and not make sense so fast. Like this, what we sacrifice to do this can, can lose its meaning. And the only way, the heart of it every single time is, is getting the shepherd young men through this incredible opportunity to grow as human beings. And once you lose that, this job doesn't make any sense for us. Just the job of being a head coach in, in, in basketball. And so this transformational part of this, this growing, this like becoming, um, is that's, that's why we do this job and it's the best part of this job. And I also think that it's actually inherently necessary 
in actually achieving the goal of winning a championship. I don't think you're going to get a transactional team consistently that's going to have a chance to win championships. I just don't believe it. I, I do believe that if you can stay in this transformational space, I, I don't love the word, but that general idea, if you can stay in this like relationship building, shepherding, growing space, then I think you're going to have better success in the long run. This, this I think every coach is, is grappling with that. I think every coach in college basketball is grappling with that right now. Th this job, you, it's pretty clear how much you love this place with every ounce of fiber in your body. This job can be great. This job can be pretty tough. When this job came open, did you ever hesitate to be like, I love that place so much, I don't ever want to lose the love for that place? No, um, I did have a moment of hesitation. Uh, I actually did, like I could trace exactly when that moment was because there's so many things that, you know, you're thinking about your family and you're thinking about um, the guys you're leaving and, and you know, there's, there, th these relationships are deep, right? Not just the guys you're leaving, but like it's deep, like it's deep relationship with donors and administrators and everyone. So like that, that, that's the part that gave me pause. Um, for just a moment because it's just that's that's mm, that's what we do right um and so there was just a momentary pause for that and there was a momentary pause for there was a momentary like um deep breath of like i get it like, change can be hard well no 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 there was a momentary deep breath of like understanding I know what Kentucky is right and so there's just a momentary deep breath of that and then after those two deep breaths it was like it's the greatest no-brainer of all time you get a chance to come do this here with what this means to me and to this state and BBN and everything that's wrapped in the and our generation after generation of fans and players and coaches have been through this place the like Mecca standard bearer of all college basketball um, then, then, you know, two breasts is all you get. And you got to go. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about as a former player, you know all about the, the Louisville rivalry. Yeah. They've got a new coach, yeah. Pat Kelsey, yeah. who's got a couple of your former players there. Yeah. Now, what do you know about him and, and how much are you going to embrace that rivalry? Yeah, I love Pat, man. I actually love him. He, he's a hard driving, like on it, 24 seven guy. I love him actually. And I got a ton of respect for him. And um, that's the beauty of this uh, Kentucky Louisville deal is, is uh, and, and he's got a couple of players that I love dearly. I mean, uh, these are two guys that I got to witness just g g sacrifice and grow and commit in a brilliant way. And so I, I love all those dynamics because that's what Kentucky Louisville is supposed to be is, um, it is like, a, it is a, it's exactly this, okay? <laughs> there's, there's nothing beautiful was, about Kentucky Louisville. I mean, <laughs> Kentucky Louisville is a brawl. It is like brothers going in the backyard and getting after it. And, and I love everything about it. And, and um, I, 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 I want Louisville to be great um, because that's what makes this rivalry great. And so it's put your hard hats on and go to Louisville. <laughs> She's literally going to go ask him. I hope that we air this, guys, because that's like... That's you know what? You know what this is perfect for? Twitter. Yeah, this will, this will, I'll, I'll, I'll post that one to, yes. to Twitter as, as, she's getting to, as she's trying to be like, hey, can you guys... <laughs> um, scheduling philosophy. Yeah. There are so many schools in this state that want to get Kentucky on their schedule yeah. each year. How do, you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I, scheduling is, is becoming increasingly complicated. And with, with the changes in profit sharing now, they're going to become increasingly, increasingly complicated. We're going to know a lot more as we see this settlement ironed out. Um, but there are so many dynamics in play. If there weren't all those dynamics in play, then um, I think we would probably, tr I would lose my mind and schedule every in-state team and every top 10 team in the country. And that's all we would do all non-conference because I'm not very smart. Um, but, but there are so many other uh, forces at play where 
to, to make the program sustainable and make it right and do it the way we have to do it, then now we get, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a massively complicated puzzle. Uh, fortunately, we have great people, and Mitch is, is unbelievable, and, and, and Mark Hill has been such a great aid as we kind of work through all this little slice of this, and, and uh, we'll continue to uh, put together the best schedule we possibly can that work for us. How important is it to stay connected to the former players that yeah. played for John Calipari? Well, the former players for every coach, like the former players for, for, for Tubby are super important. The former players for Joby, right? Uh, for every coach that coached here. Um, uh, these generations of Kentucky basketball players are one of the things that makes this place different than everywhere else. You know, I'm super excited about it. Am I allowed to talk about the TBT? I'm super excited about having a TBT here and having, like, come on, these are legends that are walking back in here to play. And one of the things we're most excited about is, is to go cheer them on as they go to work and rup. And, and this is a brotherhood. This is a brotherhood. Listen, the one thing I know about Kentucky, Kentucky was the best program of college basketball before I got here. Kentucky is going to be the best program of college basketball after I get here. That was the same as a player, and it's going to be the same as a coach. This is way bigger than any individual. It is the, the, what the strength of Kentucky is, is all of us bonding together, serving each other and loving each other as teammates, as former coaches, as everything else. And so um, connecting with all every single player that ever put this jersey on and making sure that they know that this is their home, that they built this building and they built this building, and they built RUP, and, and, and we're, we get to stand on their shoulders and try and grow this bigger and make them really proud of what we're doing. I mean, that's Kentucky basketball. Can I get one more? Jackson Robinson, yeah. he was the last kind of piece that, that you added, and it felt like you guys were like really waiting until that, that, that 12th hour almost. How, how crucial was it to add him? Jackson Robinson really important to me for like a hundred different reasons. He's important to me because he's a pro. Like, he was going to get drafted this year, and he said, you know what, I want one more. I want to do it at Kentucky. Like, I want to go that, get that experience before I go, and that means a lot. Like, you talk about a guy that knows what it means to wear this jersey. This dude turned down Jerry West, in all reverence to Jerry West right now. Um, but he turned down Jerry West wearing, wearing the logo on his chest to come back here and wear Kentucky across his chest. You tell me this jersey doesn't mean something to him, right? And... Um, he knows me and he knows, you know, we play a distinct style of basketball that requires commitment to some things that a lot of guys, it's not their natural commitment to. And so him as an interpreter and an advocate for the way we play and why it works and how it's so effective, uh, just translating that to his teammates is going to be wildly important. And then on a personal level, the best part of coaching is, is getting to shepherd and witness guys' growth. And from year one with us to year two with us, I don't know if I've had a guy that's grown as much as him as a leader, as a player, as a skill set. And I expect from year two to year three, he's going to make the same jump. And it's so rewarding as a coach to be able to kind of have that continuity in witnessing and shepherding a guy through that growth. That means a lot to me on a really personal level. Thank you, sir. I